What's up, everybody? It's your boy Showtime Doctor. Back with the Lana guy. This will be my final guide of the day. I was looking at her kit. Her kit's actually pretty damn insane. Uh, we'll get into it here. So, a couple things to note. Kind of hard to go back and forth between the wiki, so I just left one capture up. Don't worry about it too much. Uh, she is a member of the Princess Alliance, and she is also a member of the Dark Cycle, which is the PvP alliance here. So kind of interesting there. Now, let's see here. Her passive, when, upon getting her at 3 star, it's going to be entering battle, magic damage increases by 10%, range increases by 1 when cast. Now, I don't know if that means only for casting spells. That's what I'm assuming it is and not just her base attack. But kind of opens up some interesting plays for her. I'll get to that later. Uh, getting this all the way to the end, 6 star. Magic damage increases by 30% and it goes 15, 20, 30, etc. So let's get on with it. So here's the cool thing about Lana. Keep in mind that range as well. There's actually... There's an argument to be made for both classes, and I'm actually leaning towards the Saint, personally, when I get her, but let me show you what her Dark Princess can do. Summoner, it's kind of, yeah, don't worry about it. <laughs> uh, so, okay, so you got your base mages, just note they do magic damage. A Dark Scythe, that will do, and that's actually very strong for an early ability. You get the restore 50% of HP damage dealt. 0.3 damage to a single enemy ignores 30% of M defense, so depending on who you're fighting. If you're fighting someone that's like a caster, and you can eat through most of their magic defense, that's actually going to be very strong against them. Because usually casters, uh, you know, they resist magic better. Now your other ability is Freeze Strike here. This is going to be ability bonus damage versus Lancers, 1.5 times damage. So you get pretty two... Fairly unique nukes at the beginning. One damage lancer is one that heals her a little bit. And then we're going to go down here, get to the arc mage. Now arc mage, it's going to be your witch and your skeleton archer troopers. Skeleton archers, you guys should be familiar with that by now. They resurrect uh, whenever the soldier HP is zero. Although I swear to God I've seen them resurrect when their soldier HP was higher. But maybe that's just maybe that was just me wishful thinking. And then the Witch. The only good thing about the Witch, she does range damage as well, but she has to be at 100%. Actually, I'm not even sure if that means the other soldiers. Maybe that means enemy soldiers, but it just says soldier, so I'm assuming it's them. But anyways, they get attack damage 10. Now, the cool thing is you get Blizzard, which is a good AoE nuke early. It's going to decrease mobility by two blocks, and it's also going to deal 0.3 AoE damage. Bonus against Lancers once again. I still don't get why Lancers hate cold so much, but it must just be a thing with pole arms, I'm not sure. Never wielded one myself. So now we're going to go to the Dark Princess. So the Dark Princess, you get your Dark Elf Archers anytime. Uh, if you're attacking troops with 100%, HP after entering battle is increased by 15%. Or, excuse me, attack is increased by 15%. And then Wizard, this is going to be your harder nuking magic magic damage troops. When attacking, attack and M defense increase by 30%. So if you're fighting a bunch of Wizards, that's the troop for you. Now these are some unique skills here. Check these out. Got a passive here, M defense intimidate. After attacking, increases magic damage taken by all enemies within 3 blocks by 20%. Whoa. That's pretty crazy. Now the kicker is... Since Lana's range is increased by one, she has to be within three blocks to attack somebody. So she's at least going to get this off on one person, if she has it out, obviously active on her bar. But I don't know about her being within, say, like three blocks of multiple people. So your mileage may vary on this, but once again, you could probably protect her. You got a good tank on. And then Black Hole, this is a cool one too. It's just 0.36 AoE damage, but also deals two random debuffs to every troop. So if you manage to like snipe a unit from three squares away, and then he just happens to be within the AoE radius of a bunch of troops, these two things are going to wreck pretty hard together or apart. So, but let me show you now. We're going to go to the build I think I'm going to do, which is the Martyr Saint build. The Martyr... It's going to go down the Inquisitor path, so hero, hero heal effects increase by 5, so you're wondering, hmm, 
That's weird. Why would they do that? Because she has no heals right now. And then the Rock Golem, good Lancer Troop. Good against horses, etc. You're going to get Thunder Strike. Bonus damage against Cavalry, 1.5 times single target. So if you can snipe a Cavalry unit from three squares away, that's your spell. Actually, I'm wondering if... Because there, there are some spells that do three uh, squares automatically. So I'm wondering if on those she gets four... A range of four, that would be pretty nasty. Oh, well. And that's all, like, later stuff that's going to be added. And then we're going to go to... Let's go... Saint. So check this out. You'll like Saint. Uh, you get your High Priest, so it's basically the same thing, except healing effects plus 15%. As long as they're above 80%, their defense increases. So pretty good tanky troop. Rock Colossus, that's your Lancer once again. A little bit better stats, but it has a different effect. It's decreased damage taken versus defense up 20%. So kind of odd there. But check these skills out. Cleanse. This is where you could turn Lana, if you want, into kind of like a Chris-style combat healer or Sophia-style if Sophia goes down her right tree. Attacks a single enemy, dealing 1.5 times damage, with bonus when battling against demons. After battle, heals ally with the lowest HP by four times the caster's in. So when I read that, because you're clearly going to be building Lana's in no matter what you're doing with her. Okay, so say there's a bunch of demons on the board, or maybe one demon you get the skill off on. And the way I'm reading it, it says heals ally with lowest HP. Well, it doesn't give a range modifier, so that means anywhere on the map. Which means you could technically run a separate unit. Like, you know how oftentimes we either take our assassins or our flyer units or whatever out on solo missions to kill things, and you know they're going to take a lot of damage? Then you could just follow up with the Lana Cleanse right after that and get them a fat heal, even though they're really far away. So, food for thought there. And then Heaven Sanction. This is a passive. Her crit just instantly goes up 50%, her crit chance. That's pretty dumb. <laughs> right there. <laughs> and that's separate from the rest of it. Attacks multiple enemies within range, dealing 0.35 AoE damage. Dispels all enemy buffs with a bonus against demons. So sh it's it's marketing her a little bit as the demon killer, but you're still going to get a ton of damage on, off of her. And not to mention the increased range from her passive and the increased magic damage from her passive. So if you can get this going with certain gear lineups and certain buffs, she could be a monster, but... I still think most people, they're probably looking at me cra crazy. they be like, why won't you go with our Dark Princess? And I'm like, oh, I just think Saint would be kind of funner. But, I mean, eventually you unlock everything anyway, so it doesn't matter. Um, Summoner, for those who care, I personally don't. The one good thing about Summoner, I will say, you get the Ballista Troop, which means when you do spells from, at least spells that are going to put you in combat, from three squares away, the Ballista Troop can hit can hit three squares away. Because you see, it increases all range by one. So when you unlock this troop, and if you're constantly going to be doing three square away stuff, this is the trooper for you, because this guy's going to be hitting like crazy. So, still don't know about this decreased damage thing. I need to go look at that. Look at that in the game. In fact, we'll do it as soon as I switch over to the game here. A 7% chance to deal a strong debuff, which is another reason to use them. Although it doesn't happen that often. And then you get the Skeleton Warriors, so same thing, Resurrects, 1-0%, etc. And the only skill you get from this is Summon Undead. So other than the Mastery bonus, there's really not a super whole lot of reason, unless you really want the Ballista Troop. So, skills for Lana, or excuse me, stats for Lana that you're going to want to get. Intelligence, clearly. Magic Defense. Regular defense, because she will get sniped on occasion by archers and assassins, etc. HP, as well as skill, as much skill as possible. Although, you, if you're going the Saint route, you don't have to get as much skill, but skill's still nice. Alright, so let's look at... We'll go ahead and switch over to gear here. Let me kick things out, move myself... All right, so as far as gear goes, yeah, let me turn it up. I guess that one song was just too loud. <laughs> Still not that loud. Oh, well, it'll get louder. All right, so as far as gear goes, we are going to have 
The Aesteroth, as always. Usually I recommend this on most casters. When battling enemies afflicted by debuffs, an int increases by 3%. When initiating combat, 15% chance to stun the enemy after battle. Pretty strong there. Miracle Staff, another solid recommend. AoE damage increases. When dealing damage, 15% chance to deal powerful debuff to an enemy. And then once again, the Purgatory. Intelligence plus 1% when dealing damage at the end of the next turn. The enemy takes fixed damage times the hero's intelligence one time. And as always, pretty much, this is going to be my static recommendation unless they nerf this or something. The death robe is pretty much any caster in the game that does damage. Get them the death robe if you can. Because uh, it's going to, not only does it increase their damage fairly well, uh, it's going to increase survivability because crit is going to be decreased when attacked by 20%. And they have a chance to take increased enemies' damage by 20%, so... Tanky stats, that's really good if you're fighting on maps with lots of archers, lots of ballista, lots of assassins, etc. Now, here is a new recommendation I just saw today for your casters. And consider this for all the other casters, because I actually missed this before. So the Warlock Hood, a 2-star. There's still some good 3-stars for her, guys, but this one really synergizes well with her damage from what I saw, so... After taking action, 25% chance to decrease the magic defense of one enemy within three blocks by 30%. Well, we, we've already established he attacks from three squares away. So if that enemy survives, then you got a chance to take their magic damage down even further. So if they decide to come and attack you and you got those Arc Mage troopers or wizard whatever troopers, they're just going to wreck. They're just going to wreck this guy really hard. So pretty good there. And then we are going to go for the Accessories. Holy Grail, actually. 1-1. One, one. Intelligence increased by 1. If damage was dealt on this turn, restores 5% of allies' HP within 1 block after taking action. So pretty good, especially if you go on the left tree for the extra bonus healing troops. That'll all hopefully synergize. You never know in this game. They have to program a lot of things. And then we got the Eye of the Beholder. Intelligence increases 1.5% when initiating combat after battle grants a 25% chance to reduce the enemy's damage dealt by 15%. So you kill, you you hit something, you didn't kill it, reduces damage. Be really good against things like dragon, etc. And what else we got? The Vidar Rose. Intelligence plus 1.5% when actively dealing damage, 25% chance to dispel a buff. So always good there. Unless you're rolling... Uh, the removes all debuffs stuff, but you know, not everybody's gonna have that. And then the dimensional jewel with time travel in 1.5% bonus when actively dealing skill damage, 15% chance to reduce cooldowns by one. I mean, cooldown reduction means you'll have access to her actives more, which also means you'll have access to uh, more of the AoEs, etc. Now, one thing I forgot to do, let me go do it real quick. Um, as far as a skill recommend build, whether you're three open skills. So if you go in the middle tree, what I would recommend, you probably want to have Dark Scythe just because it does the bonus heal. And then this one, free strike you could do without. So then you could go down if you're Arc Mage. Go down and get Blizzard if you want the mobility, really good in PvP. But if you're fighting something like Dragon, maybe you don't need Blizzard then, because Dragon doesn't really move. So then you would go down to Dark Princess and probably take these two, Black Hole and Imdef. Intimidate, that would be a really good lineup. Now, if you're going the other route, like I will probably do, the Martyr Saint route. Once again, pick up Dark Scythe. Just for self here, self heal rather. Uh, Martyr, this one, you know, if you're fighting Calvary, I personally wouldn't right, right now, though. I would rather go get Cleanse and Heaven Sanction. That would be me, because you got the Fat Heal DPS here. And then you got the passive Crit Ridiculousness, along with the big AoE that dispels all buffs. So, that's what I'd recommend for builds, guys. Now let me get back to the game. Uh, Enchants. We'll do that, and then I'll, I'll take a look at the Lancer troop, too. Since I was thinking about that, we'll do Enchants first real quick. Enchants is pretty much your static stuff, guys, for your casters, so... Uh, come up here, it's gonna be either... 
Skill damage plus 10%, AoE damage plus 5%. Or you're going to go the heavy crit route, which I know it's one of these. Probably this one, yeah. So crit plus 5%, crit damage plus 20%. Recommend this one if you're going to do the martyr route. The other one I'd recommend if you're going to do the Dark Princess route, but that's just me. So, And if you want, there's always this one. As long as you're above 80%, which she should be if she's in the back most of the time. Not a bad thing right there to get that extra 20% damage on top of the 5% crit. Helps augment your crit a little bit if you're going the middle path. Now let's take a look at these damn troops. This will be a bonus in this video. So they're going to be... Soldier Gallery, I need to find the Ballista. And we'll keep going until we find them. Not obtained. Initiating combat damage taken. That's what it is. Combat damage taken. It's not dealt. Okay. So maybe I was reading that wrong on the website. Well, either way, for clarification. Uh, damage taking when initiating combat's decreased, if, they, if they're even targetable, because most things in the game can't do a range of three. So, have this troop with you if you're fighting against uh, some of the casters in this game, or anything that's really squishy against healers is pretty good, against flyer units, clearly. Stuff like that, you'd want the Ballista troop. And I hope that was a good explanation, guys, of what Lana's capable of. I'm actually fairly excited. I need to go pull on that banner. It's just I really want a Liana, so... I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull on Liana's banner until two more days, and then when there's a week left, I'll start pulling on Lana Bozel banner, because both of those heroes are ridiculous magic damage. And so uh, what I'm going to try to do tomorrow, guys, I'm going to try to put out videos for the net, the two new banner units that are coming. So be looking forward to that. And more good stuff. I'm going to stream right after I eat tonight. So I'll catch you guys later on. Have a good day. Oh, should I do my promo? Ah, y'all yeah, know who I am by now. Showtime Doctor. Showtime Doctor. Look to the title info. <laughs> See you later.